Hello friends, it is Groundhog Day, and today we are going to find out if the groundhog sees his shadow and there's six more weeks of winter, or if he doesn't see his shadow and it's an early spring. It's such a fun day. Today's book is Gretchen Groundhog, It's Your Day by Abby Levine, illustrated by Nancy Coat. We're going to see what happens when it's Gretchen's first day being the groundhog to predict the weather. She's a little nervous, but I think she'll figure it out. Let's see what happens in Gretchen Groundhog, It's Your Day. It was a dark and snowy night. Gretchen Groundhog sat in her burrow worrying. In a few days, it would be February 2nd when the world would be watching the little town of Piccadilly. On that day, for the first time, Gretchen would step from her burrow and stand before TV cameras, newspaper reporters, tourists, and all the townsfolk, and a big brass band. Everyone would be waiting as Gretchen looked for her shadow. For as long as she could remember, it had been Great Uncle Gus who searched for his shadow before the anxious crowd. If he saw it, there would be a roar of disappointment, for this meant winter would last six more dreary weeks. The band would play low, slow, sad music, and Gus would trudge back into his burrow. If there was no shadow, the band would play a lively tune, and everyone would hug and cheer. Spring was around the corner. But now Great Uncle Gus was too old. It was up to Gretchen, his only relative, to carry on. I can't do it, Gretchen told her great uncle. I'm just too shy. I can't stand there with everyone looking at me. You can do it, said great uncle Gus. The first time is always the hardest. But Gretchen knew she could not go out. Gretchen's not going out, the news flashed through Piccadilly. What will we do, the townsfolk asked each other. On January 30th, there was a story about Gretchen on the front page of the Post. Piccadilly puzzled, the headline said. The story continued. There has always been a Groundhog Day in Piccadilly, but this year it seems Gretchen Groundhog will not go out. How will we plan if we do not know when winter will end? The townsfolk stopped Gretchen on the street. They peppered her with questions. Should we buy more salt to put on icy roads, asked the mayor. A father asked, shall I chop more wood for my family? When can the bear stop hibernating, asked a little boy. Please, everyone begged. Please, dear Gretchen, go out on Groundhog Day. Tell us when winter will end. But Gretchen only shook her head. On January 31st, Gretchen lit a cheery fire, but it did not help her mood. All day, the doorbell chimed, the phone rang, email erupted, and urgent letters plopped through her mail slot. Gretchen felt terrible. It seemed like the longest day of her life. On February 1st, the town was in an uproar. Tourists filled the motels. In front of Gretchen's borough, carpenters were building wooden stands for the crowd. The TV crews had arrived and the band was practicing with squawky sounds. Groundhog Day was only hours away. Piccadilly panicked, read the post. Soon the eyes of the world would be upon us. What will happen if Gretchen does not go out? Knock, knock, knock. Three townsfolk were waiting when Gretchen opened her door. You must try, Gretchen, said the town historian. There has always been a Groundhog Day in Piccadilly. Do, Gretchen, I'll be beside you, said the chief of police. I'll make you famous, said the editor of the post. But Gretchen only shook her head. All afternoon and evening, visitors came. Knock, knock, knock. Gretchen, are you there? Knock, knock, knock. Gretchen! That night, weary and sad, Gretchen fell asleep in her rocking chair. But she heard the townsfolk even in her dreams. Knock, knock, knock. Please, Gretchen, open the door. Gretchen awoke, but the knocking did not stop. She hurried to the door and looked out the peephole. There, on the moonlit snow, stood a little girl. It was Hester, the town historian's daughter. May I come in? Hester asked. Gretchen opened the door. She helped Hester take off her coat, soggy mittens, and wet boots and muffler. I won't stay long, Hester said. I wanted you to see these. I found them while I was helping my mother. She held out a wooden box with some yellowed pieces of paper in it. Gretchen could see that they had old-fashioned writing on them. What's this? Gretchen asked. Records from our town history, Hester explained. 
While Great Uncle Gus made cups of steaming cocoa, Gretchen studied the first piece of paper. Tomorrow I must go out, it read, to stand before the pilgrims. I am greatly afeard. It was signed Goody Groundhog. Gretchen was amazed. Goody Groundhog lived a long time ago. She came to America on the Mayflower before there was even a Piccadilly. My mother says Goody told everyone the second winter would be better than the first, said Hester. They were very glad. Gretchen leafed through the papers. Here's one by George Groundhog at Valley Forge, she exclaimed. He says, I am affrightened to go out, but I shall. The winter has been long and hard. The soldiers must know what will be. My mother says that George told them the winter would go on a long time, said Hester. Everyone was sad. As Gretchen read through the papers, she became more and more excited. There was a page from a brave General Grant Groundhog who had fought in the Civil War, and Jean Groundhog, the tough cowboy, and Gloria Groundhog, who became a movie star. They were all afraid to go out, Gretchen said. She read the last piece of paper. I am scared, but tomorrow I will try to go out, it said. It was signed, Gus Groundhog. You? said Gretchen to Great Uncle Gus. Her great uncle looked surprised. Then a dreamy look came into his eyes. It was so long ago I had forgotten it, he said. Now I remember. I couldn't sleep or eat the night before. What happened then? asked Gretchen. My great uncle Grover helped me, Gus said. He said, you can do it, Gus. The first time is always the hardest. The clock began to chime. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They counted together. Oh my gosh, I've got to go, Hester said. I've never stayed up so late. Thank you for everything, Hester, Gretchen said. She and Hester gave each other a big hug. Gretchen went to bed and lay quietly in the darkness. She thought about the next morning, about the townsfolk gathered, the TV cameras and the crowds, the blaring of the band. She turned on the light, wrote a few lines on a piece of paper, and put it in the history box. Then she closed her eyes and fell asleep. Gretchen's dreams were peaceful. She was awoken by the sound of voices and the screeks of the band tuning up. She put on her coat and muffler, boots and mittens. She took a deep breath. You can do it, she whispered to herself. Then Gretchen Groundhog flung open the door and stepped out into the February morning. It must have been hard for Gretchen to conquer her fear and be so brave. She had to look to all the people who came before her to feel that excitement inside of her. It's okay to be afraid sometimes, and sometimes it's okay to tackle your hardest fears and be brave on the other side. I hope you guys all have a great day, no matter what your groundhog sees. If you like this book, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Read it again, Miss Jen, and I will see you soon.